Hi, hi. Today I'm going to guide you through the database examination from Pearson at Excel. Philip has stored details of customers in the contact table. We get to see the structure of the table, and we're told that Philip wants a data entry form for the contact table. Here we have all the tables, and I'm going to select Options, Enable this content. Let's see the contact table. We've got ID, title, first name, last name, two addresses, postcode, mobile number, and gender. Now it says that the form must have a suitable title, be clear and easy to use, and include a drop-down list for at least one field. So what drop-down list could be used? This could be a drop-down list, the title, and the gender. So I'm going to go into the design view, and I'm going to create a drop-down list for title. To do that, I go into the data type, and I select lookup wizard. I will type in the values that I want. Next, here we will have, like we saw there, Mr. Add in capitals, Mr., Miss, and Doctor. Next, label, title is fine, finish. Okay, let's see how it comes out. We save the table first, and we click. And we can see we've already created a drop-down list. Perfect. Now to create the form, we have to close the table. So we close the table. We are now going to go to Create, and we're going to go to More Forms and Form Wizard. I'm going to use all the fields from the contact table. As you can see here are the tables, and we have the contact table selected. I select Next. Next, here you can choose any style, so it's different colors, and select Next. Title for the form. Now we're told it has to be a descriptive or a suitable title, which means that it has to be descriptive for what the form is going to be used for. So, customer contact information would be a perfect title, or customer contact form. It's up to you to choose. So now I press finish, and up comes the form, and this is in Entry view. So we're going to go to the design view. Here we can change and edit the form, and I'm going to increase the space so I can add buttons as it was asked that the form would be clear and easy to use, meaning it needs navigation buttons. The title has already been edited and is good. So I'm going to decrease the size and now, these titles always have to be edited, meaning here it should be first name, last space name, address 1, then address 2, and postcode, so post space code mobile number. And gender is fine. Okay, now there's another thing. These fields are too big. So I'm going to select them and I'm going to decrease the size just by dragging here from the end. Okay, we still need the buttons. To do that, we're going to go to Form Design Tools, which we're in, and select Button. We click and we drag and we can have um, record operations, add new record, which would be perfect to start with. I'm going to choose text, next. Here you can rename it also, the name of the button. And I'm going to create another button. This one will be to delete the record. So record operation, delete record, next. Also text, and finish. Then I'm going to create a button that will close the form. And that means I have to choose form operations and close form. Next. Also text. Finish. As you can see, this is a clear and easy form to use. You can close it. You can go to add a record. We should be able to go to the next record. So I'm going to create another button. 
So put it here in between. So go to next record. Next, finish the same thing, text, finish. Now to make the buttons all be the same size, I'm going to choose them all using shift on the keyboard. We can go to arrange and there I'm going to select um, fit to the widest and increase horizontal space and equal horizontal. That looks good. I'm going to use the keys on the keyboard, navigation keys upward to make sure that the space and the size is similar on all the buttons. Here we could have selected all the all the titles and we go to home as we want them in bold and maybe black color so it's really easy to read. You can also choose a different font. So here I'm going to choose Arial, just type it in and press enter. And as you can see it's simpler to, to see and read. And now we're going to go to form data view and we can go to the, we can test our buttons. So I'm going to press next record and as you can see it moves to the next record. If I would say add record it should open if it's empty. I need to add a record and here I can use my drop down list and use tab to go between the fields and if I want to delete record I obviously have to have a record selected delete and then it will warn me you're about to delete a record so I'm going to say no and this button is then to close the form we want to save changes and as we haven't saved our form I'm going to say yes and to see the form I have to click this button over here, choose forms, and here's the form that I just created. Oh no, it's not. Uh, it was this one, with a suitable title. So now I'm going to rename it. And to rename it, we have to close it. So I'm going to press F2. Now we're always naming forms with FRM and then the name and no spaces between. Okay, so this is our form ready to be used. Now, they ask you then to display the form in form view and take a screenshot of the complete data entry form. So this is form view. So what we would do now is press the print screen button on the keyboard, open a Word document, And there we would use Ctrl V or right click and select paste. This is the form. And of course we're going to have to crop it to make sure that it's simple and easy to read from it. And that everything is big enough. So we're going to have to, after we crop, we're going to increase the size by dragging from the corners. And here you can see it. It's got a descriptive title, suitable title. It's clear and easy to use as we have the buttons over here. We have a drop down list and they ask to include at least one drop down field. So everything that's asked for has been done. We are then asked to answer questions. And those are, explain why the data type for mobile number is set as text. Now let's see our table. So we have to go from forms to tables. And here we have the contact table. And as we can see, there is a space here between the numbers. Now in the design view, we see that the mobile number is set to text. Why? Because phone numbers can have spaces and sometimes they start with a zero and that's why we cannot have this as a number. It has to be set as a date type text. The other question they ask is explain why a drop-down list is sometimes used on a data entry form. The reason is, as you can see when we're in data view, 
that it's easier to select from the list and it's quicker when typing in the values. So now we've answered the questions. Then we are told that Phillips wants the table sorted. Then it says sort the contact table in ascending order of last name. Now to sort we're going to go to the last name. When we click over here we get these options and we're going to select A to Z which means ascending order. Then it asks us to copy and paste the contact table into a Word document, Word processing document. So what we can do now is select this little corner here. Everything gets selected. We can select Control C for copy. We open our Word document and probably it is a new document depending on what they tell you. And you're supposed to name it Task DB1 and you would do that in the footer of the document. But here I'm going to add some space. So I press Enter after the image, Control V just to show you how the table comes up and then they can see that it's been sorted on last name in alphabetical order. And that's it for the first tasks. Then the next task is Phillips wants a list of female contacts. The list should show only the title, first name, last name, address 1, postcode and mobile number fields in this order. Create a query on the contact table to produce this list. So I'm going to close the Word document, I'm going to save it this time, and we are always going to close whatever table we have open when we create a query. Okay, the contact table, now let me see, contact, it's been saved, close it, do you want to save the changes of the design? Yes. Okay, we're going to close the form also. Okay, so we're going to create a query. We have to select the Create tab. And to create the query, I'm going to do a query wizard. And it's going to be a simple query. What did we need to include? He wants the list of females, so we need the title. We need first name. We need last name, address 1. Postcode and mobile number. Postcode and mobile number. Now, it says only female, so I will have to use the gender to select F for female. Now I press next. Now the query title should be also descriptive. Uh, this is female, so Q-R-Y, female. And finish. Now I have the query. Let's see it in design view. So we go to home and design view. And as it needs to be in the right order, title, first name, last name, the gender is not just supposed to be seen. So what we're going to do here in the criteria is we're going to write F for female. And we're going to take this tick away by selecting it. Now, if we run the query now, we see all the female contestants but we do not see the female field. And now we're told to display the results of the query. Now when we do that, I want you to minimize this table and show how many records were found. So you're going to be on the last record or select the last record and then the total amount is shown, 14. We can hide this window here and we can make sure that all the fields are viewable. You can see the whole field name and now you can print screen. So use Alt on the keyboard and print screen meaning you only take a print screen of the active window. Now I'm going to open a Word document and we're going to paste our results using Ctrl V and as you can see only what is needed can be seen in this print screen image. The next task is Philip has stored details of the bicycles in the bicycle table. He wants a list of family tandem type bicycles purchased before 1st of January 2013. The list should show only the bicycle name, type, 
purchase date and cost fields. Create a query search on the bicycle table to produce this list. So we're going to minimize this. We're going to open up again. We can close our query. And yes, we would like to save it. Let's open this field again. Now we're going to create another query. So again, query wizard. Or we can go straight away to the query design. And that's OK, so you can see how that's done also. We want to use the bicycle table. So I double click on it and close this window. Let's see all the fields. Now, he wanted only the bicycle name, bicycle type, purchase date, and the cost field. And we're supposed to show a list of family tandem type of bike. So we're going to go to the type. In the criteria, we have to write their family. And this is the name of the bike. We can now run the query just to see if it works. Run. Yes, we get only the family tandem types. Now we go back to the design view. And only those purchased before the 1st of January. So we do need the date field here. Purchase date. And it is over here. Criteria. Now before, we use this symbol. Before. And how was the date presented in the table? Let's check it out. We go to run again. And the date is with the dash between and 2012. Okay. Now we know. Before. 01. Dash. And it's January. So 01 again. Dash again, 2013. Now we can run the query. And we have the fields they wanted us to show. Bicycle name, type, purchase date, and cost. Now we run the query. These are the results. And we do the same thing as before. We minimize. We make sure we show only the records that were found. And they are four. And now we can print screen. So now out. Print screen, go back to the Word document, and paste the results there. Perfect. Okay, now we go to the next task. The database contains the bicycle, contact, and rental tables. These tables need to be linked. Uh, create relationships between the tables. Display the relationships. Make sure they're displayed correctly and all fields are displayed and then take a screenshot of the relationships. So I'm going to go back to the database. We now go to Database Tools. Make sure none of the tables are open. We click Relationships, and I'm going to delete the relationships already made, so you understand how this is created. Now, first of all, there were no tables here, so I am going to Delete the table just by clicking on it and pressing delete. You can delete the tables. And I am going to do it as it would be done from the beginning. Okay, we need to add all the tables. And they're not connected. And we have to create the relationships between the tables. Uh, we have a bicycle that can be rented out. We have a person that can rent it. Those are the contacts. And we have the rental table. Now we always connect from a primary key to the same field in the other table. Now we have the contact ID both here and here. So I'm going to connect the contact ID to the contact ID in the other table. And here I have to say enforce referential integrity to make sure that one to many relationship is displayed. Meaning one person can rent many bikes. Okay, then from the bicycle, we have the bicycle ID and then the bicycle ID in the other table. We're going to click and drag. Let go here. Same again. Enforce referential integrity and create. One bike can be rented many times. One person can rent many bikes. Now, we've displayed all the relationships, we can see all the fields, and now we're ready to print screen. So we press print screen, we go back to the Word document where we're supposed to show our results, Control-V, 
and in this case you would have to crop because it's not very clear so minimize make sure you show that it's the relationship window and now you can click and drag from the corners okay perfect now we have another task which is to create a list of contacts who rented a bicycle on a monday in may and the dates are 5th, 12th, 19th and the 26th of May. The list should only show the rental date, first name, last name, mobile number, bicycle name and rental charge fields. So now we're going to minimize this again. And I'm going to close the relationship window. And yes, I'm going to save the relationships because they need it in the next query we're going to create. We're going to go to create and query wizard is good to use. So we want contacts who rented a bicycle on Monday in May. So I know I need the contact table. We'll have a simple query. Query. Uh, the list should show only rental date, first name, last name, mobile number, bicycle name and rental charge. So from the contacts table we're going to display the first name, the last name, the mobile number and nothing else from the contact table. Now we go to the bicycle rental since it's going to be a bicycle that was rented in May. So the rental table we need the rental date and we need the bicycle name which we'll get from the bicycle table bicycle name and then rental charge uh, here's the rental charge then we press next and finish okay these are the answers from that query come up straight away so we're going to go to home and see it in design view okay so it's easier and simpler to see how the tables are connected like this now we need to put in the dates in May and so we're going to go to the rental date and it has to be the 5th, so 0 5th of the 5th, 2013. Now the next date was the 12th, so same thing again. And then it was the 19th. And then the last date was the 26th of May. Okay, so let's see how our results come out now by running the query. Date type mismatch. Okay, let's see where I entered something wrong. Okay, so the 5th of the 5th, 2013. There we go. Okay, now we run the query and we get no answer. So we're going to have to find out what we did wrong. To do that, the best thing is to check how the dates are displayed. So I can go to the rental table. Okay, the dates have obviously put a wrong year. It's 2014. So we close the rental table. We go back to the year and this is supposed to be 14. So I'm going to fix it. So all the dates. And now we're going to run the query again. So, now this makes better sense. Here we have the dates, and the query is exactly the way it should be. With the dates running from the 5th, it's got the 12th, 19th, and the 26th. And we would like to see how many were found, so we're going to minimize this like usually. We're going to be in the last record, and we're going to have to make sure we show the fields that are needed. Now, is it correct? The list should only show rental date, first name, last name, mobile number. It doesn't say in that order, so we can keep it like that. And now, we print screen, so we use Alt, print screen, and paste it into the Word document.
to make sure always the field names that you can see the whole field name. Now be careful because on the exam paper it also tells you to display the query search in design view, meaning we have to go to the design view and make sure we show exactly how we created the query, meaning this has to be shown. So now we are ready to, I'm going to just decrease the size because this is not needed to be seen, and now we can press Alt screen, go back to the Word document and paste our results. Be good to increase the size a little bit, crop the table like this. We don't need the last field. Okay, so our next task is to create a database report based on the results of the last query. Now, the database report must have a suitable title, show only rental date, last name, mobile number, bicycle name, and rental charge in this order. Make sure column headings are easy to understand. Okay, so what we have to do is check. This is the last query we made, and it's supposed to show only date, last name, mobile number, bicycle name, rental charge in this order. So we're going to skip. Uh, the first name. So I'm going to minimize this. We are going to, we could change the query here. We could take out the first name, for example. But there's another way of doing this. We're just going to close the query. We're going to create a report. So we're going to go to Report Wizard. We're going to use the last query we created. And we're not going to include the first name. And as it wanted the fields in a particular order, we're going to read the order and do it straight away here. It says rental date, so rental date, last name, then mobile number, then bicycle name, then rental charge. And that's the only thing it shows. So I'm going to press next. And there is no special viewing that they ask for. They do not ask for grouping. So I'll go to the next. And no alphabetical order is being asked for, so I press finish. And this is my report. Now, what they do ask for is a descriptive or suitable title. So I'm going to close the print preview and create a descriptive title. So it could be rentals of bicycles on Mondays in May. Okay, and we always have to change also the field name as that has to be a suitable title also. So we're going to take out the underscore and just have rental date, last space name, mobile number, so mobile number, bicycle name and rental charge. Now what's going to happen now is this is going to be way too big so I'm going to minimize this field straight away because I can see that it's too big for the bicycle name. Make sure it all fits. Now the rental charge is right aligned so I'm going to left align it. So it's the same as the other fields. Now we also have to include candidate name your name, candidate number, and center number in the page footer. So if we're going to check that the layout and the content of the report is fit for purpose, let's so change the title names, so everything looks good. Make sure the database report fits onto one side of A4, and we can see that in print preview. So I'm going to see how it looks like. Rentals of bicycles on Mondays and May. Descriptive title, done. All the titles are also correct. Rental charge, I'm going to make one space here. And then we have to go to the design view again. Rental space charge. Okay, perfect. Now, if you have to add your name to the footer, you increase the report footer space. You're going to go to, um, let me see, label. And with this you could write candidate name, 
colon your full name. So I'm just going to And this would be then A4. So we're going to see if it fits on A4. Yes, it does. We would then go to file print. And let me see if it has a print preview first. File print. Print preview. And it's perfect. Fits on 1A4. And that was the last task. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye-bye.